Are you applying to graduate school this year? In this video, I share with you a timeline that's going to help you best prepare for the graduate school application cycle this year. What's up guys, my name is Ari Valdovinos and on this channel I provide tips, tricks, advice and strategies for your graduate school applications. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. For the graduate school application cycle, you should be starting your research and your co compilation of what you're going to submit in the summer. So we're going to start off with the month of June and then I'm going to go all the way until December. So in the month of June, you should begin researching potential schools and start creating a spreadsheet of these prospective schools that you want to apply to. You should apply to at least 9 to 12 programs because research shows that if an applicant, especially for the PhD, if the applicant applies to 9 to 12 programs, they have the highest chance, the highest odds of being accepted into at least one. So I suggest that you make a list of 9 to 12 with um, keeping in mind that you want to choose three reach schools, three middle ground schools, and three safety schools. For me, I chose three Ivy League as my reach schools, and I ended up getting into two. In the whole cycle, I ended up applying to 10 schools, but I only got into half. I didn't even get into some of my safety schools. So I want you to make a list in that range. One way to go about you know, creating this list is by looking up the US, um, you know, the US rankings of the, the programs in your field. And that's, that's going to give you an idea of where to look and then dive deeper into their website and see if it's going to be a good fit for you. In June, you should also be taking a practice test for the GRE. That's going to help you learn where you're at with the, GR, with the GRE examination. It's going to help you also develop a you know, study schedule that way you're able to you know, pinpoint where you are not doing so well in and then focusing your attention on um, studying in that section. So take a practice test. There's a bunch out there on the web that are free. You can also buy a, text, a test preparation book um, and that's going to help you prepare for the GRE. You should also sign up for the GRE and then develop a study plan. So sign up for the GRE, I would say later on in the summer and that way once you take it, if you don't do so well, you can take it again during the fall term or the fall quarter. That way you're able to kind of see, um, you can take it, like, that way you have a second chance of improving those GRE scores. In the month of July, you should be drafting your statement of purpose. Start with free writing to generate ideas, develop a rough outline based on those ideas, and don't worry too much about punctuation. What you want to do is just, you know, do a word dump, an idea dump, and um, figure out what you want your theme to be with throughout your statement of purpose and what you want the committee to know about you. You also want to start making a list of three to five potential letter of rec writers and make sure that these people can write you a strong letter of recommendation. Most programs ask for a maximum of three people, but I suggest that you, you ask or you make a list of more than three just in case someone can't write you a letter or if that person pulls out last minute. You also want to make initial contact with these people just to let them know that you are applying for graduate school and give them a, like a timeline, give them like a, a target um, deadline that way you're able to let them know when you plan to submit but that way they're also aware of if they're going to be able to commit to your graduate graduate school cycle and the email let them know that you're, you're going let them know that you're also going to provide them with a packet of information that will contain your resume CV, a draft of your statement of purpose, transcripts, a description of why you chose your programs, a description of why you want to join, why you want to go to graduate school, and any, any other information that they might want from you. In August, you want to take the GRE. If you don't like your score, immediately sign up for a new GRE test. Make sure that you're going to be able to get those test scores prior to your submission or the deadline of your applications. So plan ahead, take the test at the end of the summer, and then if you don't like the scores that you got, then retake the test as soon as you can. You also want to start finalizing your list of prospective schools and identify faculty that are that fit your research interests and that fit your needs. So make sure that you have a list of 9 to 12 programs. At this point, they should be firm and start opening up those applications. Okay. Also, 
Continue to improve your statement of purpose. My statement of purpose took me at least four months to complete and to get it to where I felt comfortable submitting it. And so I want you to continue to write um, and improve your statement of purposes, ask for feedback and implement that feedback. In September, you should begin to open up your applications. The reason why is because you want to know what to expect from each application. Some applications ask for more information, such as like a diversity statement or a personal statement in addition to your statement of purpose. Some might ask you to provide additional information. Some might ask you to provide a writing sample. Some might ask you to fill out a bunch of um, small questions within the application so i want you to be prepared and i want you to know exactly what each application entails that way you're able to plan ahead you also want to continue working on your statement of purpose and also starting or working on your, your cv or resume you also want to provide your letter of rec writers with this packet so they can start working on your letter of recommendation or that way you can meet with them to discuss the letter of recommendation more so you, your packet should include a statement of purpose draft resume slash cv transcripts deadlines for each program and information about the program and other things that you might want them to consider when they are writing the letter of recommendation in october you should request official transcript for your undergraduate institutions or any other schools you attended and start submitting those to the schools that you want to apply to you also want to research fee waiver opportunities and apply for those fee waiver opportunities you also want to start making contact with professors and students at your prospective schools that way you're able to learn more about the school and the culture of the school and if you do get in what to expect as a prospective student you also want to attend admissions webinars to kind of get a glimpse of what it's like to attend that school but to also learn how to tackle the application they do provide great tips on what former students had um, done to get into certain schools so you want to attend these webinars because it's going to give you great insight not only for the application but what to expect as a graduate student they're also going to be able to answer questions about funding and fellowships and assistantships and things like that if you can you also want to visit the program and institution it's going to give you a better idea if it's going to be a good fit for you if you're going to be if you're going to feel comfortable on campus if you are going to um, want to attend that that school when i applied i did not um, visit any campuses because of first the COVID situation for this cycle, but the previous cycle, like the schools were too far, I didn't have the money to pay and travel. Um, so if you don't have those means, definitely reach out to students, that's what I did, to kind of give get an idea of what to actually expect as a graduate student. Most current graduate students are gonna give you the, you know, the tea on what exactly happens at these institutions and these programs. And most people are pretty transparent and they give you a glimpse of the good and the bad of each program. Then you also want to send a friendly reminder to your letter of rec writers, just giving them, giving them a heads up that the deadline is approaching. In November, you should be finalizing your statement of purpose and resume and CV. You should be asking your mentors and friends to read and provide feedback and then implement that feedback. You should also begin to fill out portions of the application. You are going to be applying to 9 to 12 programs and that's a lot of information to fill in. It's going to be um, very, what's that word? It's going to be very... It's going to be very time consuming because they're going to be asking you the same questions over and over. So I want you to start working on that very slowly as you as you near the deadline. You also want to start uploading documents. So if your CV and resume is finished, upload that. If they're asking for unofficial transcripts, upload that. If they're asking for a writing sample, upload that. And then again, you want to send another friendly reminder to your letter of rec writers that the deadline is in, is in one month or whenever that is for you. In December, you want to complete and submit your applications. Woohoo! You, you're done with your application. You also want to verify that your recommenders have sent out their letters of recommendation. Make sure you, you get on top of this because if your school is asking for three letters 
and only two people submit, you are gonna be disqualified from that application pool. So you don't wanna get into that predicament up, or remind your letter of rec writers. Usually what I do when it's the, de the week, that week that, um, of the deadline, I remind them every day until it gets submitted. So don't feel that if you're sending out two reminders, it's too much. Let them know because a lot of professors have a lot on their plate. They're, they're writing bunches, hundreds, or not hundreds, maybe like a, a few letters of recommendation. So you want to make sure that they remember that they're submitting one for you. All right, so that concludes today's video. I hope this timeline is very helpful as you approach the graduate school application cycle and the graduate school application process. Um, let me know if you have any questions about any of these points down below in the comments. Like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video.